I'm a former student of Mr. Roots. Um, I attended his class 50% of my day. Um, of the 50%, I just kind of just leave him from school. Um, I bumped into him at a tech conference that our company was sponsoring, and he just said, I got a great group of kids. They're all super ambitious. They always do amazing stuff in the world. I'd love you to just talk to them and tell them the truth. Because you were a horrible student, and you still made somebody yourself. Um, so yeah, okay. I'm here. We're going to have more of a conversation. I'm not like going to preach to you guys about anything. I don't have like anything I want to force on you. I'm more so just going to know like where you guys are, what you're thinking about, like, where you want to be, and all that kind of stuff. doesn't really matter if it's college or business or military or whatever. Um, and hang out. I put this up here because you guys like rappers, I'm pretty sure. Oh, like yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, so I got my start in the music industry. When I graduated high school, I didn't go to college. I got an internship at a production company in Atlanta called Motion Family. Um, they're a really big production company now. At the time, they were just a four-man team. Um, and I was just like a 17, 18-year-old kid just grabbing water for like Young Jeezy and Future and just sitting around looking like a bum. Um, <laughs> so uh, after about two or three years, they saw that I was like still working really hard and they started giving me clients that had small budgets. So they were getting like $100,000 to make music videos and people would come with like ten dollars or $20,000 and they were like, yo, Donnie, you've been working really hard. We're just going to pass these guys off to you. And I'm like, oh, who's the guys? And they're like, oh, it's Lil Yachty and Cody Shane. Or, it's the Leaf and Taylor game. Um, and I go, oh, cool. Like, I'd have done this for free. So, yeah, that's where I came from. That's what I know. That's what I spent about four or five years doing with my time. Um, you guys can, like, look up all the other stuff. This is just, like, so you can see the images and stuff. Um, I moved back to Savannah. I used to, uh, I live in a really bad neighborhood in Atlanta when I moved up there. Um, it's called the West End of Atlanta. It's like Chicago times like five in like a three block radius. It's like super bad. So uh, fortunately my friend's brother owned a house in this neighborhood. It was two stories, four bedrooms. Me and six of my friends lived in this four bedroom house and the rent was only $800 a month. Which I don't know if you guys know how rent works, but that's like extremely cheap. That's like dirt cheap. Like um, so because I'm even cheaper, I used to rent my house out to people in like fraternities and sororities because I was throwing parties and people would come and go like, man, this house is great because there's no furniture in it because you're broke. So it's basically just a big space. How much would you charge me to use it? And I'd say like 500 bucks. So if you guys can do the math, I'd do about, I'd rent it out for 500 bucks three times a month. My rent was $800, so we had like a $700 profit. So. New Year's of 2016, um, I rented my house out for a New Year's Eve party that this guy wanted to throw. I went to a New Year's Eve party in Buckhead. I'm not sure if you guys know anything about Atlanta, but Buckhead is like super nice neighborhood, super classy. So I left. Um, five minutes before the ball dropped, um, a friend of mine called me and said someone got shot in my house. I was like, whoa, that's super crazy. Go back to my house. Um, it's roped off. You can Google this stuff. I can give you the address. It's crazy. Uh, the police broke the whole thing off. It's crazy. It looks like a movie. I'm spazzing out. My girlfriend's spazzing out. Um, I clean up all the mess after the accident because police don't clean this type of stuff up. And basically was like, okay, time for me to get out of the music industry in this whole scene. I just need to go ahead and get into the business world because I know how to do it. Let me get into the corporate stuff. So I moved back to Savannah. Um, got together with two of my friends, Jawan Platt and Keith Morgan. And we basically decided to start a business. We called the business Backyard, B-C-K-Y-R-D, Backyard, No A's. Um, and basically the idea was when we were young, all of us were most creative in the backyard. So we started a marketing agency. So I transitioned. My other two partners were already in corporate stuff, working with like Forbes and uh, Timberland and stuff like that. Um, so I transitioned into doing the corporate stuff and we just went and got like nice corporate money instead of like extra money. And um, we're based in Savannah, and yeah, we're running our business. This is the second year in June, and it's turned out really well for us. So that's the story. I don't think I'm missing anything. Is there anything you want me to talk about? Um, so yeah, other than that, I really just wanted to take time out. Who's an FBLA? Wow. Um, 
And the other group is the photography. Yeah, digital photography. So everybody else, photography. Just kind of want to put faces. Cool. So I kind of just want to like talk about either business or video photography or how to make a living off of either or or how to make a living off of anything you do. And feel free to ask questions. I'm going to sit down and not look so like huge. Does that work? Does that work for everybody? You guys can both leave and say stuff. If you don't have any questions, that's cool too. You can just leave. But <laughs> I think I got some cool stories and some cool information. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Beck. Yes. Sure. Just, you guys have questions. What are you guys? What are you guys thinking? Okay. Michelle. 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 They would come to us and say, we want more students to come to STEM. We don't know how to market ourselves. Um, you know, like the concept of market, right? Like we put the word out, let everybody know that we exist, but we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to look cool. So they come to our company, we sit down with them for about six hours, and we say, this is how you get kids in middle school to come. Does STEM Academy have a Snapchat account? Probably not. You guys use Snapchat filters, so when kids post on Snapchat, because they got data and they can do it anyways, they're like, they got a cool STEM Academy filter? Probably not. And then we go make make stuff. So that's what our company does. We do that for um, Fortune 500 companies and small businesses. Helping them think through how do I make a plan and then we also go through the plan. Most companies usually either make the plan and charge uh, as a consultant or they're like all execution, so like a production company that actually shoots or a design company that designs the stuff. We do both. Anai, are you like still in the music industry? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Where I'm at now in the music industry is a little bit different because I still have all the same relationships. And most of the people that I worked with in 2014, and 15, and 16, um, that were contacts I had have all been promoted. So now it's like easier for me to not have to like get in the field. Um, but I was supposed to be shooting like a famous Dex video with NBA Youngboy uh, in LA like two weeks. Two weeks. And I don't know if you guys know TK Kravitz, but uh, yeah. TK and Cash, he's got a song called Ocean that's about to come out. I hate that first video. Before. So I'm still around it, it's just not a, that's not, um, that's not what I'm doing every single day. No. How did y'all start the fashion um, I don't want to ask you to be more technical. What, what part? Like, how did y'all, like, like, get y'all names out and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in our case, it was kind of easy to get the name out because... Myself and both of my business partners, we all were like freelancers. So I already had a name and like a, a following by the time we started the business. People had already known my name from shooting music videos and just working with different people. Um, same thing with my business partner, Juwana. Same thing with my business partner, Keith. And different, different groups knew us kind of nationally. So when we started the brand, we basically had a meeting, pulled out our phones, and just said, like, let's make a list of everybody we know. Every single person in my phone, in your phone, in his phone, and let's just make a list and call everybody. Literally just call everybody and say, hey, just so you know, we just started a business. It's a strategy and implementation firm. This is what we do. Just want you to know. You don't have to pay us anything or anything like that. I just want you to know that this is what I'm doing now. Called everybody, and then in like two weeks, everybody kind of had people that they knew that needed our services. So this person called and said, oh, my friend is the chief marketing officer at Forbes Books. Forbes Books needs a bunch of content. They've got like $100,000. Is that okay? Does that work for you guys? Yep. Someone else called and said, um, Emily McCarthy and Savannah need some marketing and some branding done. She's got whatever, five grand, 10 grand. Okay, cool. And everybody just kind of started connecting us with different people because we had already built the reputation. Um, so the answer to that question is, it's the seven years prior to starting the company that 
Travis and Bruce Park. When I first started out doing videos, I was putting out a bunch of stuff. Mr. Ruth will tell you that I used to like faithfully like bring a camera to school, do what I was supposed to do, and shoot videos all the time. Put them on YouTube, get a bunch of views, go crazy. Vlogs. Vlogs, all of that. Anything I could do, I would just like. Oh, that's an insider. Visionary minds, right? Said it. Mr. Ruth. <laughs> Mr. Ruth said it. Oh. <laughs> he can't move it. I like, man, that kid got a deep voice. Y'all got questions. What was your what was your dream job? Um, like a middle school. Uh, I didn't really have a dream job. I honestly. Being dead honest with you guys, I didn't really know that I wanted to do videos um, until I was my senior high school. Up until that, my dad used to all my dad and my <laughs> teacher used to ask me to make like a life plan, like are you gonna go to college, are you gonna get a job, and all that stuff. Like, I don't know, like, bro, I'm ten, like <laughs> I don't even know what I want to eat today. I don't know what I want to do for twenty years. Like, how do you ask me that? Then I got to high school and they were like, what do you want to do? Like, you want to go to college? Or be a firefighter, astronaut. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what jobs exist. I know like six jobs. Like rich people who like own businesses, firefighters, cops, military guys, and like oh, teachers. I don't really know what they are doing. The fast food industry. Yeah, and I didn't want to work in fast food. It's like I'm definitely not I'm still yeah. first, like, yeah. um, So when I took my photography class I just happened to like it. I didn't even really know. And my photography teacher was like, I was like, I'm going to go to SCAD because that's what they say you're supposed to do if you're creative in your high school. And my photography teacher was kind of like, yeah, with the work ethic you have, you don't have to go to college. Just know that's an option. If you can go, I can help you get grants. You could probably not go, and you'll be just as good. So he left to go get his doctorate degree. He wasn't a teacher anymore, so I didn't have a mentor. So I started a group called Visionary Minds with a bunch of my friends. So some of my friends rap, some of my friends produced, some of my friends were like fashion people. They were just like super fly all the time, super fresh. Um, and we just started a group. We just go be together all the time, we go hang out, and we just go call ourselves. Uh, we just go call ourselves VCNC. And, uh, and that was that was how it started. To happen. So my senior year of high school, I just started making an effort to go out into the world and meet people. And I got in a lot of trouble for that. Like, oh, I wouldn't understand what you're getting into when you do that. Um, my mom was super mad. My teachers were super mad. Besides Mr. Root, um, legit. Uh, Say me. Um, so yeah, it, it was just a lot. I was basically breaking all the rules that people were telling me, and I didn't know why they were rules. Like it didn't make sense to me. Like if I don't want to go to college, like like why is that required? And if I don't want to do that, why do I have to join the military or go into the workforce? Like why can't I just like make this stuff and let the world come to me? So I start putting videos out, and people just start calling me. Literally, hey kid, I saw you do work. I got a hundred fifty bucks for you. Come shoot a video for my baby shower. And I'm in high school. It's like, man, hundred and fifty dollars to do this thing that I just learned how to do. Oh my god! Cool. I thought the baby. Uh, so I graduated high school. I was already making probably like a thousand dollars a video on the side, and just trying to pump it back into that that group that I started. But I didn't have an answer to the question. I didn't have like a dream job. I pretty much was confused up until seventeen. What's the biggest risk you've taken? So what like in Currently, hiring people. So we have a 10 person team. Um, like right now, while I'm here with you guys, it's a group of people at our office working um, on real client projects that are super important that if they go bad, people will, like my reputation is ruined. Um, so trusting the people that I hired today, like currently where I'm at, is probably the biggest risk. It's very easy after eight years of doing something 
to like not worry about doing it anymore. Like I'm not scared of shooting a video. I know I can shoot a video. You give me two dollars, you give me two million dollars. I'm gonna shoot a great video. And you guys have stuff like that now. Like imagine just trusting somebody to like pick your clothes out every day. Like, no matter what you got. Like, I'm gonna pick your, I'm gonna go in your closet, put your outfit together, and that's what you gotta wear. That's what hiring people is like. So, to follow up on that, what characteristics do you look for? Um, generally speaking, when you're when I'm hiring for somebody, uh, I'm looking for people that fit into the culture of my team. So my business part, none of my business partners, none of us graduated from college. Um, Jawan went to Armstrong for like a quarter, dropped out. Keith went to Savannah Tech, dropped out. Um, so when I meet people, and even if you went to college, that's fine, but I'm looking for people who understood that college was a tool, not a um, not a guaranteed thing. It wasn't like a ticket into a bunch of money. It was a tool to get information and connect with a bunch of people. When they come in, I'm looking for people who like are super brave, enjoy breaking stuff, enjoy messing up. That's like the number one rule if I hire you. Mess stuff up. I want you to... Make something, I want you to try to do something today. And if it's good or bad, I don't care. We can make it better now. Uh, so people who are scared or like always asking for my permission, I, I generally either have fired um, or they just, they hate me because they're like, you're not telling me what to do. You're an adult. <laughs> That's the way this works. You think and then you do and then you keep fixing it over and over again. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's that's the biggest problem. Brave people, bold people. Um, our project manager, I think you guys met our project manager, Chris. Yeah. Um, he came from London. His degree is in geography. He came from London. He applied to work with us, and he took the. Do you guys know HTML? No. Yeah. yeah. He took the HTML from our website, rebuilt it, and made it his resume. And that's what he sent in as his resume. So it was our website, but instead of saying backyard and all of our services, it said like Chris McNaught, and it listed out all the stuff he did. So instantly, like, I had 40 applicants for the position. I put it on Indeed, which is like a job website. Everybody was good. Everybody was trash. Nobody was good. I was super confused. I saw his application. As soon as I saw it, I called him at like 2 o'clock, and I was like, how quick can you get out here? Like, I'm Donnie from Backyard. I'm a partner. How quick can you get out here? He's British, so he had like accent. He's like, oh, I can get down there in like an hour. So he gets down there, and for three hours, we mapped out a client project, like from start to finish. He dropped his wife off downtown. He's supposed to be there for 30 minutes, and he stayed for three hours. And we literally, I told him I have a real estate client. She wants to figure out how to do marketing. He was like, you should do an influencer campaign that's like MTV Cribs, where you go into houses and you get like celebrities from your music industry background. Like you get like Wiz Khalifa to stay in a house in Savannah, and we document it and put it out. I was like, that's a great idea. Like, that's a great idea, and I can do that today. I can make that phone call today. So we pitched it to the client, and we closed the deal off of that three-hour session. So it's like, I gotta hire this guy. He's got better ideas than me. He's smarter than me. He's cooler than me. Why would I not hire him? Um, so those are the instances. Always trying to figure out what the same. You talked a little bit and danced around it about the importance of marketing yourself and branding yourself. And especially when you're hiring someone, looking to see if they've already branded themselves. How did you start out doing that and how do you continue to, to sustain the brand? Um, brand is like this like, you guys hear that word a lot? Like brand, brand? What are we talking about? Yeah. Show, Show of hands. Brand you know what brand is, it's not as cool as you. Uh, so brand are like one of those like jargon terms that people use. Uh, brand is just more so what people perceive. As. It's just your reputation. So if I if I came in here in like a white lab coat, automatically you guys would assume that I'm a doctor. That's brand. Like if I came in here in a cop uniform, you guys would be like, oh, he's a cop. That is brand. Uh, so when it comes to branding, in my especially personal brand, it's about like doing you like. Really trying to figure out how to do you. Like, that young lady has on wireless headphones. I now think that she likes music. Do you like music? Yeah. How did I know that? That's her brand. Like, there are particular things that you guys are doing that make it easier for somebody to understand who you are very quickly. So, like, I would hate for you guys to think I'm a corny business guy, so I would never wear a suit. Personally, like, I would not wear a suit. Who I am, what I do. 
I actually like wearing, uh, the only reason I'm wearing sneakers is because I'm here. I pretty much wear flip flops, cargo pants, and a t shirt. All day in the office. Only when I go out in public, I put on sneakers. Because my brand is like, I'm a radical business owner. Like, I'm not a traditional business owner. I don't do all that weird stuff. I didn't go to college. I don't, like, I didn't start this business with a business plan. I basically just started doing it. Well, that was going to be your question. What? Like, what was your business plan going into? Didn't have one. Uh, don't go broke, and that's still our business plan. Like, <laughs> do not go broke. I would start a pizza shop and sell a lot of pizza because I know how to sell things, I know how to make really good stuff, and I know how to be dope. So I would start a pizza shop, a coffee shop, a sneaker shop, and we're going to probably do that stuff. Um, I just know how to shoot videos first, so that's what I sold. Me and my team sold first. Um, so like, to not be a college graduate and stuff like that, about how much do you make a year? I can't hear you. To She's, not be a college graduate, oh how much? About how much do you make per year? Me? Yeah. I generate probably sixty to eighty grand. When you own a business, uh, when you own a business, it works this way. And this is gonna get complicated. So y'all let me know when y'all get confused. Uh, when you own a business, you charge for it, right? So let's say the business makes a million dollars, right? Do um, you guys know what overhead is? No. Um, you know what? You know what cash flow is? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's say it costs me one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars to run backyard. This bills overhead is bills. Basically. It costs me one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars for my team for the people that do the work. Right? It costs me twenty-six thousand dollars a year to have the office space that I have. Um, I should have kept all these numbers. But it cost me fifty thousand to have my team. It cost me fifty thousand dollars to have my office space. It cost me fifty thousand dollars to get all the camera gear that I have. It cost me fifty thousand dollars to um, market ourselves and do like sponsored ads on Instagram. That's two hundred thousand dollars. We make a million dollars. So the other four hundred thousand dollars, we decide to um, create salaries for ourselves. Salaries are just like guaranteed income. Um, so in our case, we have long-term contract with people. So if Mr. Ruth was my client, I would say, Mr. Ruth, you're going to pay me $10,000 a month for 12 months, right? So that's $120,000. My goal is to get 10 of those to generate $1.2 million, right? Who asked me the question about this? My goal is to generate $1.2 million. If I can secure those contracts in January, then I know for a fact the company is going to generate this income as long as I do the work. So from that, I can create a salary for myself. And then at the end of the year or every quarter, which is like every three months, um, we distribute the profits amongst the owners. So every quarter, if there's um, $100,000 left over, we distribute 33% amongst me and my other two partners. Generally, we distribute about 25%, and then we put the rest into the company's operating capital. Operating capital is basically like cash on hand. So if I want to go open up a school, I got a million dollars over in school or whatever, a pizza shop. So guaranteed 60 to 80, it fluctuates because people mess up client projects and then like we lose a deal or we lose a contract. Um, and then at the end of the year, um, you tally that number up. So salary 60,000, at the end of the year, it could be anywhere from like 10 bucks to 100,000 bucks. It just depends on how much profit I have at the end of the year. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 Like, when you were building, like, when you were, like, building, did you, like, start using the iPhone, or, like, did you already have, like, the Facebook? Yeah, so when I started filming, the iPhone wasn't what it is now. The iPhone was, um, I don't even know if the iPhone in 2011 had, like, crazy video capability. I don't think the iPhone even had, like, 2011 iPhone wasn't what you wanted. If I was yeah, you guys' age and I had, like, an iPhone 8 or X, like, I'd probably never buy a camera. Like, <laughs> uh, um, iPhone X shoots in 4K. My girlfriend has an um, iPhone X. It shoots in 4K. It shoots in slow-mo. It's super crisp, and you can buy lenses for it. Like, it's just, it's no point. The whole goal is to tell stories, and that's what you're selling, so... In your case, I would have. I just didn't have that advantage. Definitely, like, shoot a busy video today. You got a camera. Somebody else has a question. 
Is there room for individual commissions, like if you're the only person shooting a video? Def define individual commissions. Like, if you're the only person working on a project, would you be the only one paid, or does your entire team have to split that? For my company? Yes, sir. Um, so for my company, it would be commission-based. So there's a formula that you use, that I use, that I created based on how much it costs me to run the company just from rent. And basically, I this year and in the last year, I decided I didn't want to do all the work. I much rather <laughs> come talk to you guys and have other people do stuff better than me. So if Mr. Ruth said that I've got ten thousand dollars for you to do this work, ten thousand dollars a month for you to do this project, my job is to figure out the cost of that. So let's say for Miss um, Beck to be the videographer that shoots his videos, um, I want to pay her twenty dollars an hour. I think it's going to take about eight hours to shoot the video. She's going to make one hundred and sixty dollars from that, right? Um, what's your name again, sir? I'm gonna mess it up. Doctor. Principal. Oh, Dr. K. <laughs> if I'm gonna have Dr. K be the project manager, I wanna pay him $35. He's gonna make sure the team gets the work done. So he's gonna make $35 an hour. It's gonna take eight hours to complete that this month. So I'm just adding, I'm multiplying what everybody's gonna make and how I can still have profit at the end. I still have a large amount of money. That goes into the company. So everybody's getting paid, in our case, everybody's getting paid a salary. And I'm just using that formula every time. And and then from there, determining how big the workload is. So eventually, Ms. Beck is going to get stressed out because she's got to shoot 100 videos in a month. She can't shoot 100 videos in a month. She has about 40 to 80 hours, depending on company culture and stuff, that she can actually work. So now i got to hire a second videographer. So am I making sense so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So the way I think, I think very simplistic. So it's easier for me to create fixed costs you know, like it doesn't slide up. So if you work at like McDonald's and you get paid ten dollars an hour and you work overtime, that's a that's a variable. That's a thing that can change. I don't like things that can change. So it's easier for me to say, this year you're gonna make thirty thousand dollars. Period. Does that work for you? Do you wanna make thirty thousand dollars? Yes I do. You're gonna work this amount of time. Now I can run that that number that isn't gonna change against all the numbers I'm gonna get. So if it only costs me hundred and fifty thousand dollars to have all of you guys work for me. Then I know if I make a million, I got eight hundred thousand left over. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Commission works if you want to. Um, if I hired a salesperson, like if I hired you to go get clients for me, then I would give you a commission, and I probably wouldn't even pay you. I would only pay you on commission because I want you to go out and have the drive to go get this work done. I'm giving my team a salary because I have an office and I can be in the office every day and basically make sure our team likes to work and we're having fun. That's all I hope that helps. Yeah. Yes, sir. You don't have to lie. You say nah. It did. Okay, so we all know you're a bad student. You covered <laughs> that ground. Are there things you wish you'd have paid more attention to when you were in school that you had to learn later as you're moving into your business career that, you know, man, I just wish I'd have paid a little more attention when Mr. Ruth was talking about that. Um, I don't wish that. I'm kidding. Um, you guys are in a position right now where you have, like, time. And, and Ruth, like, work with me on this answer. I want to make sure I, like, answer the point. Um, you guys are in a position where you got time right now. Like, even though some of y'all are asleep, some of y'all are, like, engaged, some of y'all are excited, all y'all got is time. I don't got no bills. <laughs> I don't have like any real actual work. You don't have like a team of people to take care of. You don't have a mouse to feed. You have time. What's up? You got mouse feed? I saw you like this. I was like, man, you got you got that many mouse to feed. But um, you guys don't got mouse to feed. You just got time. I don't have money for that. If I knew what I do now um, in school, I would have spent way more time having actual conversations with my teachers. Like doing, honestly, doing work in school is relatively easy. It's relatively easy. And that's kind of why I wasn't motivated in school. It was like, y'all gave me all the answers. All I got to do is read books. <laughs> Put the right answers out here. And I'm pretty good. Taking the time to actually get to know you, which I did do, um, 
paid off 100x. Uh, so that's one thing. The second thing, I wish I would have. I wish I would have understood that all the things you guys are learning now are cultural points. So your history class and understanding history, well, teachers are going to tell you this, like, oh, when you learn your history, you have a better future. And that's, and like, I know it's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Our business, like, the way we look at business, the way we approach people, the way we approach conversations, it's based on, like, pretty much the way, like, Neanderthals operate. It's a book called Sapiens that, like, literally breaks down, like, you guys know, like, we're homo sapiens, like, that's our excuse. It breaks down how we became homo sapiens. And if you look at, like, on a textbook level, like, we still pretty much operate like cavemen. Like, the cavemen understand that whoever had the fire led the room. So me standing up on this, on this chair, all you guys assume I have authority. Right? Like, I learned that in history class. I didn't realize what the app, like how to use that. I didn't understand how to use um, Rome as an empire as a metaphor for the business that I'm building and learning how to lead a team. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know, that sounds like super like nerdy. <laughs> but like, basically, if you guys learn history and you pay attention to presidents and what presidents did, you could learn how to make a million dollars. I didn't know that until this age. Like, that didn't make sense to me in school. I was just like, oh, Theodore Roosevelt did this, did this, did this. He's a great president. I didn't understand that the infrastructure, like the, the things he put together, the teams that he led, and the way that he did it made these things happen <laughs> where other people couldn't. So like Barack Obama did certain things, broke certain rules, had backlash, dealt with backlash in a certain way that allowed him to accomplish his goals. I deal with backlash in a certain way. It's things I'm saying to you guys now that if the right camera was in here, could be like conveying a bad message to give kids. But I want you guys to think differently, so I'm going to do that. So understand that every class you guys take, really, really, really try hard to think about, like, okay, the grade I'm going to get on this, passing this class, all that stuff, that's easy, right? You pretty much just read the stuff <laughs> on, like, a... Basically, we pretty much read the stuff and then just explain that you read it and know it. What you guys need to use your time for right now is thinking about how can I use math and the formulas that I'm learning in math to know how to make a profit. Because that's what I had to do now. Like, that actually matters. Even though it was super boring in high school, it matters now. I use Excel spreadsheets every day. I hire and fire based off that. I make a lot of money because I know math. If I did not know math, I did not know how to create formulas and see patterns and trends, I'd be broke. Like, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. I'd be homeless. So, I just wish I understood how to apply all of the skills and the cultural references that I learned in real world settings. Okay? Yes.
I don't brand myself as a, like an Instagram influencer, or like a celebrity. Um, so it wouldn't make sense for a company to do that. You know our companies do it, right? Y'all not make million dollars no. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 The most profitable businesses are the businesses that want to profit. Does that make sense? Um, Apple is like the most profitable company in the world right now, right? Yeah. Electronic companies in 1975 were not the most profitable companies in the world. Does that make sense? So. Companies that want to make a profit and companies that want to make like cool stuff generally are. I don't, have y'all read Shoe Dog? Anybody here read Shoe Dog? What's that? Uh -huh. You know what Shoe Dog is? No. I don't know. I don't know what Nike is? Yeah. 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 It's the story of the guy who made Nike. Oh, yeah. Um, Nike was like a big accident. Like, half of y'all probably buy Nike stuff and don't realize that like, that dude was an idiot. Like, like, actually, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Idiot. I'm super scared. I'm broke. So, getting into the sneaker business in America in the 60s was not a profitable business. It was not profitable. People didn't even really wear running shoes out. They wore dress shoes. Phil Knight wanted to make a profit and wanted to make a great product, so it's one of the largest sneaker companies in the world. Um, so, focus more so on wanting to make a profit and just wanting to make a profit and then wanting to make something really, really useful. Does that make sense? Like, I can tell you Bitcoin and like tech and like making apps and building that stuff. Um, that's BS. Like, there's tons of people who are making apps, making things, and are going to go broke really fast in that industry. Does that make sense? So. Animation is not profitable. What she said? It's profitable now. They bought Marvel. Oh, and oh, oh, no, sir.